I have two March releases to tell you about, two April releases, two readathons, and one, of course, book to movie adaptation. So grab yourself coffee, go in and for the March TBR. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel at least twice a week and then movie reviews or book to movie content here on the weekend. Sometimes some bonus book to movie content here in the week if it's been as fruitful as it has been recently. Um, today I'm going to be talking about my March reading plans and I have it uh, very structured, as I said at the beginning of the video. My February wrap-up will be coming up very soon, so you can see what I managed to get to. Uh, if you missed my February TBR, I will leave it linked up above, but make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on seeing how many of those books I actually managed to get to. So let's jump right in. March releases. First of these comes out this Thursday, um, but I have saved it for this week because I was waiting to get my proof copy in the mail and this is Flappy Entertains by Santa Montefiore, um, which comes out in the UK on the 4th of March. I am on the blog tour for this one on the 5th of March. So blog is linked down below. You can read my full review on there on the 5th of March. And this one is nice and short, but because I knew I was getting a physical copy of it, that's why I didn't put it on the February TBR because I didn't want to rush it. But yeah, it's literally 230 pages, but I'm excited to jump in. I know a few people have read it and it sounds fabulous. This is adult fiction and Santa Montefiore writes really engaging, often historical fiction. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that historical fiction isn't normally my thing. But Santa Montefiore, the way she writes is just, it's just delicious. And so I can totally deal with going back through time. For her and her writing and then the other March release I have I've also been saving for a little while as well because one of the readathons which I will talk a little bit more about later on in the video is the um, Kindle clear out readathon which happens from the 13th to the 19th of March I will leave details of videos from the hosts in the description box below if you are thinking of joining in still plenty of time to join in um, and this ticks off one of the challenges for that and happens to be released during that week. So this one is The World at My Feet by Catherine Isaac. So um, I can pretty much tell you right now that I will be picking this one up on the 13th of March. And this one comes out in the UK on the 18th of March. Um, I believe I have a review of one of Catherine Isaac's novels on this channel so I will leave it linked up above if I'm right in thinking that I'm pretty sure I did a standalone review for it because I also love her writing I also have a vlog of an event that I attended in um, Liverpool a couple of years ago well three years ago now for the release of uh you meet everything i was thinking was it messy wonderful us or was it you meet everything i think it's you meet everything um and i just again love her writing and it, this is also adult fiction then moving on to a couple of april releases which i will also be attempting to read during the kindle clear out readathon um in the middle of this month now these are both released at the end of april they both come out in the uk on the 29th of april but i am very excited to read both of them um, and I got these both via NetGalley so I just really want to pick them up and if I can do it during this readathon it's you know spurring me on to do it so the first of these is Her Last Holiday by C.L. Taylor. Um, I interviewed C.L. Taylor on this channel to celebrate her release of her YA thriller The Island but I did also ask her about this book which is her latest adult thriller. Her Last Holiday comes out in the UK on the 29th of April and I will leave that interview linked up above because she does give us some insight into this one at the end of that video so make sure you check that out and um, I will be vlogging that readathon so you'll be able to see my thoughts on um, these books as I'm reading them during that readathon um, so hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video and then also another friend of the channel who's also been interviewed on this channel and also gave hints to this book when they came on the channel this is A Taste of Home by Heidi Swain 
we did get some very exclusive tidbits about this one during her interview. So again, I will leave that linked up above, down below, in the end screen, um, if you didn't get a chance to see those interviews, because these authors do give um, some lovely inside information into these novels. So this one is very different to The Last Holiday. Um, this is an adult rom-com and it's just guaranteed to whisk me away to somewhere where I would rather be. Um, and this one involves a fruit farm as well. So I'm excited about that one. And I just love the cover. I love the strawberries. Um, I can see it definitely making me crave some strawberries. So I'll have to make sure I have those on hand during the readathon. Um, so then as much as the Kindle clear out readathon is going to help me clear out my Kindle and my audiobooks and my sort of eARCs in general, I am still on a quest to clear out my bookshelves. So you might remember a couple of months ago, I read my Lisa Jewell novels that I had sitting on my bookshelf for years. Um, and so I decided to embark on another um, sort of author readathon. So I will be um, sort of hosting, if you would like to join in with me, Mike Gale March, because I had five Mike Gale books on my shelf. And I was like, well, the 1st of March is a Monday. So technically we've got kind of five reading, reading weeks in March. So we can read these books. So the first one of these, I have a physical copy of the previous book, which I have already read. So I don't know why I have the physical copy of this one, because I know I got the audiobook from the library. I know I got the audiobook specifically from Slough Library. I got the CD of this one. So I have sitting on my shelf here, turning 30. Most of these books have stickers on. So if that's triggering for you, I've had them too long to take the stickers off now. So just a pre-warning, there are stickers on these books. Um, so I have read Turning 30 and this book follows Matt Beckford. I was like, it begins with a B, Matt Beckford. So I read Turning 30. It's a really long book. Like this is a chunky chunky book so on my um I think it's on Scribd I have the audiobook for Turning 40 so this one will be uh being read in the first week of March and this also ticks off the buzzword thon challenge of mentioning time now I do have some books that actually specifically mention time but Turning 40 it's a birthday it's a number it's a date that to me meets the challenge of time. So this will tick off the buzzwordathon challenge for March and will also mean that I have one less book on my shelf. And then in week two, this is where we actually get to the, don't know why I thought it was turning 40 I had on my shelf and then found out it was turning 30, which I have read. Week two, again, big sticker on this one. We have um, Mr. Commitment, also obviously by Mike Gale. And this has been sitting on my shelf. Like the, I believe the covers have changed maybe twice since this one. If you see my March TBR blog post, that you'll see the updated cover for the Kindle version of this one. Um, and this one I will probably read as a physical book because I don't think there even is an audio book for this one, but we'll see. We'll have to watch my wrap up and find out. And then week three, because um, this counts towards the kind of Kindle clear out challenge because it's clearing out my shelf. I also have this on audio and I bought this on audio, I think when it was on offer on like an Audible deal. Um, so I have this on my Audible. I was sent a proof copy of this one. It's still got the press release in it. Uh, 28th of August, 2014, this one came out. Um, and I was sent this gorgeous proof copy and I was very excited about reading it, but I know it got sent to school. And so I didn't pick it up until after publication date, which is why I probably never got around to reading it. So this will meet a couple of the challenges for the Kindle clear out a thorn, which I'll talk about in a second, but this is Seeing Other People by Mike Gale. And um, in a bid to try and get me to read this one, I bought the um, audiobook when it was on offer from Audible, which is why it counts towards the clear out challenge. I thought I also had a NetGalley copy of this one too, so, but this will get this one off my shelf, although it is a nice floppy proof, so we might end up reading the physical book of it. But this is the um, week three, title that we'll be reading and then in week four we have wish you were here i'm just going to read you the tagline of this one because it sounds really good three guys one girl 
one hell of a holiday. So if I'm, again, looking to be transported by my Heidi Swain read, I believe I will probably be transported by this particular read as well. Um, and this one will also get it off my shelf. And the sticker for this one is on the back. Um, so it's not as triggering, but I'm going to show you because you can see that I obviously picked these books up as I was going along going, I really love Mike Gale, I'm going to read it. And then it just sat on my shelf. There we go. That's that's enough of that. And then um, there is a bonus one, which has a sticker on the front and a bashed spine. Um, this one, because we have like three days of the end of March before we begin April, which is like a new week in March. And this one I have, I can easily access on audiobook from my library. I think it's also on Scribd. It seems to be everywhere. And this is a non-fiction. So I'm kind of putting this in as a bonus non-fiction read. Could be week five, could be if I feel like I need to pick up some non-fiction. This is The To-Do List by Mike Gale. So this is, um, him drawing up a to-do list containing every single item he's been meaning to do but just just keeps putting off covering everything from read war and peace to clean gunk from bathroom you bend and tell parents i love them through to work out how to reset the clock on the dvd player mike begins the task of a lifetime will he do it maybe but can he do it without driving his long-suffering wife claire completely insane in the process and this just sounds really funny i've um been to a couple of mike gale events and he's always very engaging and very funny when you hear him speak he's done a few um virtual events during this time and so um i think hearing his sort of non-fiction is going to be interesting too so this is like a bonus extra read for mike gale march um so yeah let me know in the comments if you fancy joining in on that um because i would be happy to do a sort of live show a bit like the one that i've got coming up with hayley talking about all our christina lauren reads um i think she's going to be joining me in at least a couple of these reads so if you want to read along and want to join in, make sure you follow me on Instagram um, because I'll be posting about my reading on there. But also let me know in the comments if you would like a sort of live show discussing this so that you can come along and join in and discuss as well. And then finally, before we talk about the like what challenges I'm hitting for the Kindle Clear Out Readathon, I have one book versus movie that I will be reading um, I may have already read it by the time you're watching this video because the movie for this one comes out on Friday and I'm excited. So again, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on the book versus movie video. But I'm going to be reading Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. And this one I have, <laughs> this one would be great for the Kindle Clear Out Readathon if I didn't want to read the book so I could watch the film as soon as it comes out because this one has been sitting on my Kindle for so long. It was a super anticipated read. Loads of people recommended it to me when it first came out, so I bought it on Kindle. I also have the audiobook of it because it was, um, when you bought the Kindle, it was like $1.99 to add the audio. So I have multiple ways to read this and I've just never got around to it. So thank you to Netflix for buying the rights and making the movie and making me actually read this book. So yeah, book versus movie for that one coming very soon. Um, but the Kindle Clear Out Readathon has a sort of bingo board format. So again, I'll be updating that on um, Instagram. They've got all sorts of templates that I can use to update that. Um, so I'm following the hosts, obviously, is one that I can take off very easily. And writing a review, I'm committing to you now that I will write a review for everything I read during the Kindle Clear Out Readathon week. Um, and then a buddy read, I will tell you which one is a buddy read. And then I'm also doing eARCs, which is quite easy because most of the ones I'm reading are eARCs. Um, a new to you author, fave trope, favorite author, anticipated read, and most recent purchase. So um, ticking off a... <clears throat> Anticipated read E arc will write a review of favourite author. We have her last holiday by C. L. Taylor. And then um the one that I showed you that I said I bought on audiobook is a recent purchase. It is also a um buddy read, and Mike Gale is a very favourite author of mine as well. It's also a very anticipated read, and I will of course write a review of it since I was sent a review copy uh seven years ago. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, we'll be listening to this one on um, audiobook because the Kindle clear out, you know, rules say that you can do audio listens as well. Things that have just been on your Kindle for, 
you know, a million years. We all know, we have those things. Um, there is a thing to do like your like Kindle count before the week begins and the Kindle count at the end of the week. And I'm like, I don't know if I can cope with seeing those numbers, to be honest, because uh, it's quite large. Then um, favourite author, EARC, will write a review, anticipated book, probably a favourite trope of mine as well. The World at My Feet by Catherine Isaac. This one will definitely be the first one that I read for the readathon because it comes out on the Thursday of the readathon. Um, and then again, EARC, favourite author, most anticipated, probably like the trope of this one, A Taste of Home by Heidi Swain. Um, and then for a new to me author and one that I have as a an audio review copy from NetGalley. So this is a bit different. It's an audio book, but it's still an e-audio arc. <laughs> um, and this is a new to me author. This is uh, Difficult Women, A History of Feminism in 11 Fights. And um, so this is, I think this is just like a new release cover because I've seen another cover for this one floating around that is like red. Um, and so it is a kind of anticipated read because I've been aware of this one before it got put on NetGalley for review. I think a lot of titles are being popped on there because people aren't aware that there is uh, an audiobook copy of them. Um, but if, I know that this is non-fiction, but if you can sort of count this non-fiction thing as as a trope, it's kind of, you know, it's not a trope because it's not fiction, but I love reading about um, feminism and strong women and difficult women. And it's probably one of the things that I gravitate towards in terms of nonfiction. You know, when I go into a bookshop, well, when I go into, <laughs> when I go into specifically Strand in New York, where I was this time last year, um, I will, you know, go to that corner in the basement where there's like feminism and feminist studies and things like that. And that's where I kind of pick up. So I think you can count it as one of my favorite tropes as well as a new to me author. And this one's a little bit different as well because it's an e audio review copy. So we shall, uh, we shall see how we get on. Like I say, I will be vlogging that one. So um, you will be able to see my progress on how I'm clearing out my reading. So I am excited about everything that I've got to read in March. I really like how it's quite organised. I think um, when things, you know, are starting to get a little bit busier in life and, you know, weather's up and down, I think it's quite nice. I've quite enjoyed having my Christina Lauren book every week in February and having some like February and March releases to read by certain dates. I think sometimes you need like freedom of reading and then sometimes having specific things to read by specific dates is quite, is also quite liberating. And so I'm quite excited that my TBR is very organized this month, but we'll see if I actually stick to it. Who knows, some of my library holds might come out or I might get something else on NetGalley that I've requested um, and it might throw the whole thing off kilter. Uh, but yes, we'll be vlogging that week. We'll be reading the Mike Gale books. Let me know in comments if you want to join me. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that vlog. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, hit that notification bell for that book versus movie for Moxie. Um, and yeah, I will be back with another video for you very soon, that February wrap up. So I'll see you then.